So in this video, I'm just going to give a quick overview of Spark and how I test it as part of my build process. Because essentially what I do is I have unit tests that um, start up the Spark server, then run very simple HTTP tests against my web app, all as part of the build process, and it runs really fast. I have been using Spark for a while. I've used it in my multi-user REST-based text adventure game, and I've used it to package up very simple apps. And I've just recently used it to bundle up a whole bunch of different web pages, JavaScript apps, and a REST API app into one file, one jar file that people would download. Now the bulk of that jar file is the um, is Spark framework and the Jetty server that Spark's built on top of. And that gives about 2.5 meg into the, into the final built jar. But it's still quite a small web server. The reason I like it is it's really, really simple to use. So let's start with what is Spark. You can see here, I mean, the documentation is pretty simple. It's pretty good, but basically Spark gives me a very simple way of creating a project. So here are some routings. Essentially, it's just code. I say get, when, when a, a request comes into get slash games, what I want you to do is redirect them to this. And all the routings look something like that. They look like gets or posts, very simple setup. The reason this works is that Spark is essentially a statically accessed thing. So as soon as you hit one routing, as soon as you start putting one routing in, Spark starts up, starts listening, and it will start rendering pages. And this app you can see here is really, really simple. All it does is um, deploy pages. And the way that that works, is that Spark is configured to come back with any pages in the slash web folder, which is in resources. So I put static files in there, Spark will render them. Spark can be much, much more complex than that. Here's a REST API I've written. It has get requests coming in. I delegate those off to a, an object that I've got, which represents my entire API processing. I've got options requests being handled here. I can do debugging, so I can do uh, events before any request is handled. I can do things before particular paths are handled to check for um, authentication. I can do puts, posts. I mean, pretty much everything that we can we want to do in here is a basic API we can we can put in here. I can deploy the Spark stuff off to Heroku if I want to. I've written multi-user apps in here. It's very simple. What I like about it is it has forced me to separate the actual app with the server because I'm never sure whether I'm going to stick with Spark. Spark's an embedded server. I might want to put it into war files and have it sitting somewhere else somewhere. So what I do is I have an actual application which I, I run. Everything is bundled into this particular object that handles everything. I just use Spark for routing. So I keep my use for Spark very, very simple. And when I do need to send HTTP requests in, I have this general representation of the, the Spark request rather than sending through the Spark messages. So I have a, a clear delineation between the, the domains. So I've got a Spark domain, I've got my application domain, then the communication is through these um, Spark request and response objects, which I may or may not actually use inside the API, but anything could send this in. This could be any REST server. A request, which is why it's got this general API request in here. So Spark's pretty simple. But what I do as part of my testing, let me show you some of the tests that I run against the Spark app. So here's a test. This is a very simple test. Um, basically, I've got an, an HTTP sender abstraction. So I'm sending an API call to toggle something. I'm setting up an HTTP request here. I'm setting up the basic auth. I'm creating the payload, I send that through. These tests rely on the Spark server running. And I do that in a before class. This is all I have to do to start up my Spark server running as part of these integration tests as part of the build. So I don't deploy the app anywhere. I don't have to build a war file. I don't have to put it in any kind of container and start up a server. It's a it's an embedded web server, so I can just start it running on a specific port and start issuing requests to it. It runs very fast. The benefit 
in unit testing terms is because this, or I say unit testing, what I mean are integration tests running as part of my kind of main unit testing build process. A lot of people don't like doing that um, because I'm building a web app and all my domain objects are tested anyway, then I make sure that I can send in some HTTP requests. I'm comfortable doing that as part of the build. Some people don't like it, that's fine. If you're comfortable with it, this is an easy way to use Spark. Basically, because Spark is static, it will run and continue to run as long as any of these tests are uh, using it and referencing it because it's sitting there as a, a static object. As soon as the JVM that's running all the tests comes down, the Spark server comes down as well. So I don't really have to stop the server. Basically, I just start it up. So in every before class, you can see it in here, I start up my server if it's not running. If it is running, it doesn't do anything and just makes all the requests. I'm going to show you how fast this is. Let me run these tests here. So you saw these errors at the top. This is me trying to hit the heartbeat on my application to make sure the server's running. As soon as this passes, as soon as it gets a response back, then the tests all start running. And you can see that I've done quite a lot of API testing in there and it ran in under a second, so that's not bad. The bulk of the time there was um, compiling stuff. So if I run this again, it should run faster. There we go. And again, the bulk of the time is in the, probably the startup. Where's the first one that ran there? This one. So this test class ran really fast. It ran first two milliseconds. This didn't trigger any processing. This one here, which you can see is taking 224 milliseconds, is the one that actually took the brunt and started up the Spark server for us. Other than that, all the requests are happening pretty quickly. So what I have done here, and you can see the code for this on GitHub. I'll, I'll put a link at the end. You can see here I've got a a little configuration object here. Let's have a quick look at this. So I have got a Spark starter abstract class and this specific Spark starter for this particular um, application extends that. And it has uh, configuration methods which are unique to it, but it also has the two methods we have to implement for the abstract class. And they are for this specific Spark application, how do we tell whether it's running? And for this specific Spark application, what do we have to do to get it started? And because I've put all my um, application code and Spark code into separate objects to make it easy for me, I just call that. I could, if I wanted, just run the main method that you'd normally run to start up your um, application, and that works fine too, but I tend to put everything away in another object, so I just run that. So let's have a quick look at what this Spark starter does. So what this does is it checks whether it's running. We call the is it running, which will make an HTTP request to our heartbeat. If it's not running, then it will start the server. Then it will try the is it running again. And that seems to work relatively well. There can be a little bit of delay, but I don't mind that as part of the test that I'm doing. What I have in here is a kill server method, but I've never actually used that or I've tried to use that, but it didn't make any real difference. I've left it in my code, but it's pretty small. This is just a polling mechanism to start the server up, see if it's running. But because I use it in all my um, Spark applications now, or will be once I've amended it, I've generalized that into an abstract class. But Spark itself is pretty simple. And what I like about it is it's really easy to configure from code. I don't have any configuration files. I don't have any data files or resource files I'm loading in, just write some code. There's a default port, but I can override it. Um, it's very easy to add routing. I primarily delegate everything off to another application, but you can write code in there to handle things if you want. And it's relatively small. Now, I haven't looked at other embedded servers that make it easy to do this. At some point I will, but this meets my needs at the moment. And what I really like about it is it's so simple to start up that I can start it as an embedded server for running basic tests against. I will still deploy the application and run integration tests against it, but very simple tests. You saw it didn't take that long to start up the um, server 
and run HTTP message tests against it. So I do that as part of my build process. Remember, I'm building very simple apps here. They're primarily apps for training purposes and testing, but because we can deploy this onto Heroku, there's no reason why these can't be bigger apps. And there's no reason why you can't take this approach for local testing if you want to. And if you want to find the code that I've got here, it is all in GitHub. I will put links into it. You can see it being used in my testing app project and the Spark testing abstract class is in this Spark testing project. So you can go and have a look at all the code for that. Um, it'll be somewhere in my Evo tester repository. But Spark is an excellent choice if you just want a lightweight, easy to use, embedded web server for Java.